Guys, welcome to Crypto Insight. I've been a professional options trader for 20 years. And about a year ago, I switched my focus from equity options to crypto options. Why? Because of the huge volatility and opportunity in the space. Trading Bitcoin has allowed me to multiply my capital in a safe way. And in these videos, I will give you the benefit of my experience and insight into how I'm reading the crypto vol market and using options to either hedge or speculate on future expected moves in the crypto space. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I hope you find this content useful. Thanks. <music> So crypto this week. So we we had our little momentary bounce the week before. Um, and I had said there was a big resistance band, sort of 42 and a half to 44 and a half thousand, right? And the fact that you had your max pain up there, you know, means that the option market was probably going to keep us from really breaking to the upside. Okay. But you're starting to get some positive news like Elon pivoting back again towards if they can address the mining, the ESG issues, things like that. That was your kind of good news, right? So what's happened since then? So we've had a general macro risk sell-off last week, which crypto kind of gets caught up in most of the time anyway. So that kind of, uh, and you obviously a hawkish Fed, strong dollar, these type of things are generally going to be bearish for Bitcoin and bearish crypto. So that kind of started it. But then you had China come out and ban a load of mining. And they've been gunning Bitcoin for a while now. So it seems like it's reached a bit of a crescendo here. They're trying to ban cryptocurrency transactions, crypto mining in certain regions. And, and this has been the latest thing that has triggered an acceleration to the downside in Bitcoin um, and, and other cryptos as well, right? So, you know, this chart is, you know, is kind of showing us that this big level at 29,000 is basically being tested as we speak. And I've been saying that that is the big line in the sand, right? That needs to hold. If that doesn't hold, then you've got risk of a move down to, you know, 24 and then probably 20,000, right? So there's not, there's not much stopping it, right? So, and, and because a lot of people are eyeing up the same support zone, it will likely trigger a load of stops on not so much liquidity, and it will likely take the market down pretty fast, right? So very, very pivotal point we are at Bitcoin as we speak. This level is kind of a must hold level, okay? Uh, what's going on in ETH? Um, so I would say similar levels that I've been marking were 17, around 17,000, 1700, sorry, on ETH. That seems to be the equivalent level to 29. And then I had another little level below that around 1550 if, if there was a bit of an overshoot, basically, right? But, you know, if that goes, you know, what Bitcoin to move from 28 down to 20, it's pretty punchy. It's another 30 odd percent. Where's that going to take Ethereum, right? I mean, that could take Ethereum down to getting close to a thousand even, which would be brutal, but very possible. Okay. Now, longer term, people who've kept their powder dry are going to lick their lips and buy as much Ethereum as they can at 1,000 if it goes there, right? Because it seems that that is really where the future is if you look at the DeFi movement and if you think that movement's going to survive, basically, right? So, you know, potentially lots of great, great long-term buying opportunities about to present itself, yeah, in terms of if you look at these markets and, and kind of some of the levels that we might potentially get to. If you look at the relative pricing of Ethereum and Bitcoin, um, yeah, it's slightly kind of underperforming still as this spread works its way back down. You know, where's this spread going to find some support? I mean, the big level that it broke at 0.045, that was the acceleration level. We've kind of had a big bounce off 0.055. We're not a million miles away from that, right? So maybe we're 10% away from that. So on the downside, if we get another 10% underperformance of Ethereum, we're going to be sitting at that level. And that might be your kind of point where you want to play a long Ethereum trade um, if you think that's kind of a, that level is going to hold basically, right? So in, in terms of the spread. 
Yeah. Now, um, so something to just kind of think about on on what's going on with volatility within crypto. Yeah. Um, so if I share this screen. So just looking at the weekend price action, right? So you had, you know, Bitcoin was hanging around that 35,000 area on the kind of Saturday evening. So you go into Sunday evening and we get the break of 35 that take us down to 32 initially, okay? What happens to implied vols? So we've got the green line and the gray line on here. So implied vol, weekly implied vol, seven day implied vol is the green and the gray, it's a bit annoying that it's gray because you can't see it that clearly, but the gray is the one month implied vol, right? So you had a pop from around 85 to 100 on the one week and maybe 90 on the one month. So market drops below a support, vol spikes, then market kind of stabilizes, bounces, vol goes straight back down to where it was. Market breaks again, this time goes down to like that 32, 31 area. This time vol ratchets up to 110 in the front, the one week stuff and, and about 95 in the one month stuff, okay? So you're getting a very, very strong spot versus vol correlation to the downside, okay? So, and that's explained by why people are willing to pay more for puts than they are for pulls, because that spot vol dynamic is very much to the downside. When spot goes down, vol spikes. When spot recovers, vol goes back down, right? So that's, a, that's kind of telling you which way the skew should be when you, when you monitor that price action and you see what's going on there, basically. Yeah. Um, so just thought something to kind of flag uh, there. So then if we look at kind of what's happened to the term structure and, you know, it'd be interesting to see what it looks like right now. I don't know how updated this is in terms of real time, but uh, where are we? So we're at 30,000 right now. And, you know, you can look at the term structure right now in Bitcoin completely inverted again, right? So you've got the front actually, you know, end of this week stuff at 145 vol. Next week stuff, 110. July at 105. So and that's quite a bit higher than it was yesterday, basically, right? And we can see two days ago, it was even lower. Two days ago, we were pretty much a flat line around 90. So we've ratcheted up again as this market has, has sold off, which should be no major surprise because the realized is also is also going up, right? We're getting we're getting wild swings in this stuff, which is no surprise as we're entering this major, major important support level. Because if this support level breaks, we're talking about a fast 20% move down. 20% move down equates to a, what realized volatility, right? Extremely high realized volatility, like 300% or something. So so, you know, it makes sense that Vol's reacting the way it is to the potential of a downside break. Yeah. So then the next sort of important question is, well, what is skew saying, right? Um, and skew, you know, it had been sort of normalizing somewhat. If we uh, expand on here. You know, it, obviously early May had got to like pretty extreme levels and then it had been normalizing. And really you look at it, it hasn't gone crazy. I mean, it's still, it's definitely still for the puts, but we're talking about in the range of sort of 10 balls over for the puts basically, right? So arguably skew hasn't gone ballistic because we are approaching 30,000, which we already saw back in early May, right? So it's only when we break to a new spot level that all bets are going to go off, basically, right? So I actually think skew is probably a little bit too low. If you look at how sensitive the market is to moves down in spot and how much volatility is reacting, the fact that skew is not more expensive is a bit of a head scratcher to me, right? I, and that's why I've, I've been doing trades to actually get some skew on board the type of trades that I've been doing, as I mentioned to you guys on the on the Telegram group, was I've been selling July 28,000 puts to buy as many 20,000 puts as I can for that premium, basically, right? Because it looks to me that the relative pricing of those options is a bit out of whack. Because if we break 28,000, we could be at 20,000 in a day, right? We don't have to wait for it. We're not going to have to wait a month for it, right? If we break 28,000, we could literally be at 20,000 within the next day or two. 
And that means that the volatility on the 20,000 strike is completely mispriced relative to the 28,000, right? So once you understand these kind of almost trap doors in the market where you've got an inflection point, if you break, you're just gonna get a massive acceleration lower, then you can identify hotspots or opportunities in the vol surface that are not really reflecting that risk. And that's kind of what I think we have, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if we break 28,000, if July implied volatility on Bitcoin goes to 200, basically, right? That's, that's the kind of move that I think we could possibly see. And right now, you know, if I was to look at where the implied vol is for that strike, you can kind of see it here, July uh, expand. So the 20,000 strike is right now only being priced at like 125 vol. I say only, but we're talking Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin vol, 120 value, right? <laughs> because if we go down there, I think is a very, very high probability that that vol is going to be closer to 200, right? So that for me is where the opportunity probably lies to the downside, right? It's quite hard to, to kind of just buy puts outright in Bitcoin at such high vol levels, but to identify where you think the skew might be mispriced, then you can set up trades like that. Because if the market bounces from this level, it's got easily 10,000 point bounce in it over the next few weeks. And then the structure that you put on doesn't end up costing you any money because it was a zero premium structure, right? So that's why I would say that works basically as, as a protection trade that doesn't cost me too much, right? If, 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 the, if the market doesn't actually break to the downside, yeah? So that's what we're thinking on skew um, term structure. And then the other thing to kind of pay attention to, I guess, is where's Ethereum vols? Um, are they trading? significantly higher, lower, whatever. I mean, I think you're better off kind of looking slightly longer dated. So if we were to look at August vol, it's about 118 right now in Ethereum versus Bitcoin, same expiry. Uh, August is what, 102. So you've still got about 16 vol premium ETH over Bitcoin. So for me, that's about the right price. It kind of, that's where it tends to trade somewhere in that 10 to 15 vols over. Um, I don't think there's an obvious trade there. I'm still waiting and watching to see if that spread can come down a bit. And there might be an opportunity to go long calls in Ethereum and short calls on Bitcoin as, as a way to play the recovery. And the fact that Ethereum's got a load more upside than Bitcoin. Um, but I think you might need to play that in the longer maturities. And in those longer maturities, the Ethereum vol surface will probably maintain its, its bid and its premium over Bitcoin. Because I think a lot of the market's gonna, gonna know that that is a bit of, that is a no brainer trade to be looking at basically, right? From a long-term perspective, yeah. So nothing too clear on there in terms of the Ethereum um, side of things. Uh, other than that, you know, I think generally call, cool, there seems to be a bit more of a call skew uh, on Ethereum, certainly in the longer end compared to Bitcoin, but nothing too wildly different between, uh, between those two surfaces from what I can see. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of where we are on crypto and crypto vol. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. So you don't miss out on future videos. I'd also encourage you to sign up for a free trial to our live and interactive Macro Insight Zoom call. As part of our trading community, as well as the call, you'll also get access to our Telegram chat and our weekly market reports. To find out more, you can also connect with us on the socials. All the links are at our website, www.options-insight.com. Thanks. Thank you.